we uh, today we continue reading purport of verse 12 Ananta Baba's purport of, on verse 12 on Vilapa Kusumanjali. Um, the translation of verse is O Kalyani, auspicious, beautiful girl, when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectarian rasa cure my deafness? O Kalyani, auspicious, beautiful girl, when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectarian rasa cure my deafness? So, for those who have books, it's old version of Vilapa Kusumanjali, uh, page 50. Ananda Baba writes, All the senses, all the senses of a Jata Rati Bhakta, a devotee who has attained a strong taste for bhajan, all his senses become deaf for the impressions from the material world. He only hears Radhika's ankle bells. And he is not disturbed by material allurements. For him, the material world goes out of sight, and the Nikunja comes in sight. He hears Govinda's flute and sees Govinda's bluish effulgence mixing with Radhika's golden effulgence. He feels the touch of their lotus feet. Srila Rupa Goswami describes your speech is like a stream of nectar, so strong that it will flush the trees of my material existence away. Once again, Rupa Goswami, your speech is like a stream of nectar, so strong that it will flush the trees of my material existence away. Radhe, Radhe, mm. Radhe Kaji. Yes, yes. you very nicely repeated this important <laughs> sentence which Baba wrote. So we can very clearly see how you, kata is important, especially when we listen, properly listen, kata from self-realized persons whose hearts are pure and automatically their words are completely pure. So the sound of speech or singing, we also can say, is so important, but the pure sound of the pure heart can purify the contaminate, 
contaminated hearts. And Rupa Goswami here is very nicely said, your speech, Radhe, but we, like a sadhakas, we can say your speech, Rupa Goswami, my Guru, then, the speech of all Rasik devotees, is such a strong nectar that can flush the trees of my material existence. So, faith in the words of Acharyas are the crucial key point for practicing neophyte devotee. And the reason why we are always practicing this Shravanam, but also Kirtana in the form of Kata, is for purification of our heart. But this is the secondary thing. This is preparation for the heart. The first thing and most important thing is that through this kind of pure kata, nectarian, rustic kata, we are trying to give the pleasure to Yuga Lakishore. And also with this kind of kata, we are trying as much as we can to give the pleasure to the Vaishnavas. And when the Vaishnavas are happy, pleased in the heart, their hearts are at least little melting because of kata. They are giving compassionately. They are giving their kripa. So that sadakas and neophytes can advance more and more and more. But to have a proper kata first requires proper shravana. So last time, in the first part, Andakaji, remember we were talking so much, in, especially in the beginning, about importance of proper shravanam from the heart, not from intellect, from the mind, but from the heart. Importance of feelings during the Shravana, because this is guarantee that the words of Acharyas will start to jingle in our hearts through our ears. And when their words start to jingle in, then maybe by their mercy, we, one day, one lifetime, we can hear some little sound of jingling of Radharani's ankle bells, waist bells, and so on, or jingling of her, her sweet syllables of her beautiful words. This is the, because this kind of words are manifestation of pure love. When Radharani is talking and we sadakas are trying to absorb our hearts and mind and all senses in her speech, this is something which is melting our hearts, but also gives a pleasure to Radharani. And I always remember myself, you know, this seva of talking and talking and talking. <laughs> Very often is what is. <laughs> but at least I try always to remember you are not talking your words. Try to repeat the jingling of the words of Acharyas and your beloved Gurudev. And try to remember that is for their pleasure. And I think 
in one place or two places, Baba is saying that Radharani, when the Kata is pure, Radharani is coming with Krishna and say, look, look, come, come. Just hear how these neophytes are trying to glorify us. So whatever we are doing, we should do from the perspective of devotional service to satisfy our beloved Ishtadev and to satisfy their servants, Vaishnavas. It's not about us, it's everything about them. So, proper hearing brings devotee to the level of proper speaking. And proper hearing, nourishing this speaking, and the proper hearing and speaking, nourishing, remembering. So this is the reason why Gurudev is always, although despite the four our mistakes, especially my mistakes, is always pushing, please, talk, 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 share, share, share something. Because she, he is trying to teach us how important it is. If you really want to speak something, first you have to learn to listen. And it's not easy. <laughs> so, Andakaji read, Please, Andakaji, read the first line. Mm. You can hear me? Yes, all the... Mm -hmm. All the senses of Ajata, Rati, Bhakta, a devotee who has attained a strong taste for bhajan, all his senses have become deaf for the impressions from the material world. So who is this Jata Rati Bhakta? Devotee who attained the level of ecstasy, of Rati. Ecstasy, madness for his beloved Ishtade. And Baba is explaining here with all senses, he wants to participate in the loving devotional service to his beloved, in this case, Radharani. And he is deaf with all senses. He is deaf for all other material impressions. In samskaras in material world are so strong. And it's not possible to become free from these material samskaras if we don't take a shelter of jingling of the words of Mahavanis of our beloved Rasik Acharis. So with all senses, it means I don't want to listen with my eyes anything else but Radharani. I don't want to listen with my ears anything else. I don't want even to touch anything else in my heart. I only want to touch her in my bhajan. I only want that all my senses be engaged in devotional service of her senses. So for that expertise in seva, we need kripa which can bring us on this beautiful level of ashakti, 
attachment and then to rati because jata rati bhakta is devotee who Baba is saying he has a strong taste. This kind of taste is not normal taste. You know, I like this lilas. I don't like this lilas. Some disturbance comes and suddenly I lose the taste. Wow. Baba is not speaking about this taste. He is speaking about very strong condensed, thick taste. And this is possible only when devotee is completely one-pointed to the goal of his life. If we have many goals, many interests, then the taste cannot be thick. For example, I have condensed taste, I don't know, in politic. If I have condensed taste in politics or economic or, I don't know, astronomy, whatever, from material world, automatically means that my taste for this beautiful kata cannot be so condensed, so thick. And to receive this, condensed, thick, strong taste, ruchi, and ashakti, I desperately need association of those who are constantly flowing in this strong taste. And when we really deeply not only understand but with all our heart and Felix accept this fact, because this is the fact, then the taste and one-pointness will start to grow, and by the Kripa, one day, one lifetime, become enough condensed, enough thick, to put us on this level of Jata Rati, Sadaka Bhakta, in which devotional love starts to bloom, not appear only, but to bloom. And Baba is so expertly is giving here how devotee wants to hear how to touch, how to look, to see different qualities of Radharani or Ishtadir, different lilas, and he wants to become completely deaf of other things, but he wants to become deaf. Again, we are coming to the point of desire. Yes, that's why I did it. Um, yes? Yes, you have something to share? Ah, no, okay, okay. So we need strong desire to attain strong taste. If the desire is in everywhere, in so many directions, then taste cannot be condensed and thick and focused. And for that we need proper sangha. Not a satsangha, but satsangha. Gurudev, I see you now. Can you explain mm -hmm. us a little bit more about this Jatarati Bhakta? Mm -hmm. Se seems like Gurudev is busy. Okay. Yes. Yeah, he's talking. Okay. 
I have okay. just a small picture. I cannot. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Andakaji, if you have something to add, or someone else. Um, what came to me when we read this, uh, Rupa Goswami said, your speech is like a stream of nectar. It's so strong that it, the stream of nectar, strong stream of nectar, <laughs> it will flesh the trees of my material existence away. So for me, this is like a, a big hope. Uh, I remember also in this uh, five chapters of uh, Rasa Lila, there is, I think, the last verse. It said, it said, first comes the strong attachment strong attachment to Radha and Krishna and then lust goes away mm -hmm. it pushes the lust <laughs> from our hearts so yeah I feel <laughs> our Ishtade always does first step <laughs> then somehow because we are by constitutional position Eternal servants of our Ishtada. We just move, our hearts are moved because Ishtadev knows where to press, how to do this heart massage. And then uh, our heart pumps better <laughs> spiritually. <laughs> we acquire somehow by these moves of Ishtadev. Just every step is like this. Ishtadev does something, our taste increases and it flushes, it, it uproots the trees. Uh, I, I'm, I, I was, uh, I spent my childhood near the river. So a few times a year there was a flood. And then in the river, when there is a small flood, you can find like branches and, you know, some stuff. But when there is a big flood, then you can find uprooted trees, trees floating, and you see the root also, root of the tree also uprooted. So uh, I feel here what Rupa Goswami is saying, that even the root cause of material desires will go out meaning this deep, deep subconscious taste for trying to find solution here. I have to find solution here. There must be solution here. In this meat flesh level. Then <laughs> even that is uprooted and our hope that I will find find solution goes crosses the line, and then we see, oh my God, my Ishtadev is so powerful, and is giving me these higher experiences, this param drishtva, higher taste. Drishtva also means see. I see, my God, I see, I see what is what is be what's better for me. What brings me more sweet taste in my life? So yeah, this this was was what I wanted to share. This power of the first step of Ishtadev, <laughs> Shirad. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we will continue reading. Hmm? And Govinda Kaviraj says, 
I have locked my outside door. My material lookout. And I have opened my inside door. Which is reaching to my Manjari Swarupa. Worldly people cannot understand this ecstasy. Wow. <laughs> Shirad, beautiful. It's very clear. <laughs> it's very clear. What is the night for the saints? This is the day for the worldly people. And what is the night for the worldly people? This is the day of the saints. There's two different types of consciousness. Spiritual persons are not interesting for anything in outside world. They're locking their doors to not allow all these allurements to enter. But in the same time, there are widely open inner doors. So, worldly people cannot understand this kind of ecstasy. Only devotees, even jnanis cannot understand this. Even yogis cannot understand. Karmis cannot understand. Only devotees can understand the value of opening inner doors, which brings soul to his natural position. Who else but a person who has awakened his internal identity can address Radharani like this, calling her Kalyani? <laughs> Internal identity can awaken in Jatarati Bhakta only when he closed the doors for outside material allurements and completely open his inner heart, inner being to attain inner goal with inner identity. And only that kind of person can appreciate, can know, can relish, and can address Radharani with proper name according to that time and her inner feelings. Oh, Kalyani. It's not just, oh, I just remember to rem this name of Radharani and I'm now calling her Kal Kalyani. It's for the purpose. I'm addressing her, Kalyani, because I want to remember her on specific pastime. And this is my seva. Seva is to properly address Radharani with proper name and properly remember her on the lila, which is completely suits that moment, that second. Mm -hmm. This is expertise of Manjari Bhav, who knows exactly what's going on in Radharani's mind because she is completely, deeply connected with Radharani's heart 
and automatically she knows what is going on in her mind and what she really needs. This is Raga Bhakti. Knowing desires of the Ishtade. And like in one commentary, Baba is saying, but it's not easy to know the desires of me, but my beloved Ishtade. And for that we need bhajan and deep connections with those who already knows Radharani's inner core desires. <laughs> Mm. Mm, maybe I would like to, to add about this internal identity. Our internal identity is part of the internal world. It's a person who has senses. <laughs> With our feet, we walk through Vrindavan. With our internal feet, <laughs> we walk through Vrindavan. With our nose, we smell the fields. We can smell Radha's, where Radha is, <laughs> Radha's fragrance. We can smell where Krishna is, Krishna's fragrance. We can see the beauty of our Ishta, the beauty of our sisters in Manjari case, beauty of their service with our spiritual mind, heart. We can connect with mind, heart of our Radha and our Manjaris and Krishna. And this blessing of experiencing Vrindavan with our internal identity, with our internal personality, is, uh, how to say, it's un incomparable. It's like a super sweet... Hmm. <laughs> Thousand times my spiritual master from Iskon said, it's a thousand times sweeter than the sweetest sugar in this world. <laughs> this experience. It just catches us by its sweetness, not by fear, not by rules, not by, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. But it's so uh, irresistibly sweet this internal identity, experience of internal senses, all our 11 senses, spiritual 11 senses. Mm. Yeah, this is what I wanted to share. share <laughs> Srila Bilva Mangala Thakur <clears throat> Lila Shuka glorified the jingling of Govindas, of Sri Govindas ankle bells in his Krishna Karnamrita. He's writing, May the sweet jingling of the jeweled ankle bells of the gopi lover, Krishna the lover of Radha, that sounds like the cooing of the swans in a lotus forest of the Yamuna river be manifest in my mind. Krishna das Kaviraj 
you remember Krishna, Shila Krishna Das Kaviraj, so Bilo Mangala Thakur was before Goswamis, and Krishna Das Kaviraj was one of the last Goswamis here. She was, and Raguna Das Goswami came to Vrindavan, and Krishna Das Kaviraj <coughs> listened from him, and yeah, they developed guru disciple relationship. And then Krishna Das Kaviraj wrote, on the basis of uh, Raghunadas Goswami's sharings, he wrote uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. So this, our Krishna Das Kaviraj, writes in his commentary on this verse yeah. that the jingling of Krishna's angle bells is so relishable because he is following Srimati Radhika at that time. <laughs> oh, so this is Krishna's ankle belt. <laughs> this is the two bhavas. We should be very careful when we are reading alone and when we are listening. We should discriminate properly. Bilva Mangal Thakur is completely mm. diving in a Saki bath. And he is glorifying Govinda like his desirable lover. I want to listen your jingling bells because you are Gopi lover. And this sound of your Govinda, your jingling bells, is sounds to me so sweetly, like a swans. You know, this is the relishing of Sakiba. And this is the example of someone who is completely one-pointed, Staiba in his Sakiba. Mm -hmm. But Baba very expertly gives another example. Immediately he gives another example, like an Andakaji <clears throat> said, he appears later on. Krishna does coverage. Mm -hmm. And he is the, also someone who received Goranga's mercy and Goswami's mercies. And he understood the difference and he is completely one pointed in Manjari Bhava. So the same scene. He's understanding and relishing in a different way. Yes, he is running and his ankle bells are so sweet. I agree with that. But <laughs> because he is running after my Radharani. And the goal of his heart. My Radhika, my beloved Swamini, makes the jingling of his ankle bus so sweet. But I know the reason behind that. So this is the two moods. The Baba is very expertly putting one mood for one for devotee who are attracted for Sakiba, and another mood for devotees who are attracted for Manjimba. So that they can clearly see the difference and decide what I really want. So those who are relishing Krishna, they will say, okay, I like to listen. And Gurudev is so many times saying Ananga Manjari is giving the test, ultimate test. Do we want to become Saki or do we want to become 
king curry or manjari. So you have to check, we have to, sorry, we have to check in our hearts how still my attraction and attachment and desire for jingling of Krishna Sankalbas are still here in my heart. What will happen if he appears and start to jingle and dance and sing his sweet songs? Could I really have such a strong bhava that I said to him, just go away, I'm not interesting for you. Yeah, that's very attractive for your devotees. But I know why you are dancing so nice. I know why your flute is sounds so sweetly, because you are constantly meditate on Myra Dharani. You are constantly wants to attract her. You are calling her. You are running after her. <laughs> So, for that we need to listen and listen and listen and meditate, meditate in a proper, desirable mood, so that all these emotions completely pervade our existence. Like Anada Kaji said, completely with emotions, steps, eyes of Bhava Deha has to be awakened. But which Bhava Deha? Sakiba or Manjariba? Radhe Radhe. So I just want to say thank you very much, Goranga Sundar Prabh, because recently Gurudev focused to find only Manjari Baba. We are reading introduction of Srimad Bhagavatam, and we are reading uh, introduction of Chaitanya Charitamrita by Srila Prattada. Before, we couldn't recognize this. But by Gurudev's mercy, now we are practicing, practice how to find our Baba. And today, Goranga Sundar Prabhu find this very subtle but deep, important difference. It's very, very helpful for me. Not for me, maybe. I feel many, many. You, you give us the vision, how to find, how to taste Manjari Baba and what difference. Thank you very much. Shirade. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and also Gurudev, who gave us this vision. He gave us this discrimination. Discrimination, what is it? What is this? What is that? Is so important. And this is the Dadi Buddhi Yogantam. To receive the proper intelligence, but this is not mental intelligence. It's a Buddhi. It's feeling, bhakti, emotions. Bhakti emotions said, Bhakti intelligence, there is no difference. We have a difference. I have feelings and I have intelligence. For me and bodily consciousness of life, this is different things. But the Dadi Buddhi Yogantam is coming Bhajatam Priti Purvakam. First, I have to be completely connected with all my heart and senses with you, then you are giving me intelligence to come more closer to you. And which kind of intelligence? To know philosophy? To know verses, Vedas, up and down, left and right? No. Emotional intelligence, bhakti, devotional intelligence. This kind of intelligence I am lacking. Lacking. And you are totally agree with you because without this discrimination, which Gurudev is constantly, constantly, constantly 
is trying repeatedly. I simply don't know how he can do it so many times, so many times to repeat to all of us same things and help us that ultimately finally become fixed in one bala. Because only then we will receive intelligence to have proper discriminations. And like you, Kishoriji said very nicely, only because of opportunity to listen from the angle of Manjari Baba, we can have discrimination for Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, Bhagavatam, even Srimad Bhagavatam, which sounds so philosophical and complicated. But if we put in the sense of science of rasa, then everything is so easy. <laughs> but only because it's not our gain, it's not our attainment. We simply receive that mercy. Actually, like Prabhupada said, I came here to give you intelligence. <laughs> but buddhi. Devotional, emotional intelligence. Chitta, another word, chitta vrit. Thank you. Ananta Das Babaji said many times, Manjari should be sensitive. Huh? Ah, once again. <laughs> So, Ananta Das Baba many times says, Manjari should be sensitive. What does it I don't Sen understand. Sensitive. 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 Uh, sensitive. Yes. Jati Rata Bhakta. Jati Rata Bhakta is a sensitive devotee because his senses are awakened. His senses are are intense but spiritual senses. Go, mm -hmm. Vardana. This means Jati Rata Bhakta, mm -hmm. sensitive devotee. And mm -hmm. it's not sensitive because his mind is sensitive, his ego is sensitive, false ego. <laughs> his material senses are sensitive. No, he is sensitive because he is deeply rooted in his spiritual identity. That brings him to this kind of sensitivity. Okay, we will continue reading. So Krishna Kaviraj writes in his commentary. that the jingling of Krishna's ankle bells is so relishable because he is following Srimati Radhika at that time. Then how can we describe the sweetness of the jingling of Sri Radha's ankle bells when she is followed by Govinda? <laughs> <laughs> we, can only, we can only relish by the mercy of Radhika's maid servants. It's not possible to describe. There is no words. Once are eating lotus stems by the bank of the Yamuna to enhance the beauty of their voices, thinking if by eating these lotus stems my voice would only attain at least a thousand <laughs> part of the sweetness of the jingling of Govinda's ankle bells. Mm. 
just as a pupil, student, hopes he can sign, he can yeah. sing, he can sing or explain just as good as his future can, in teacher can in the future. What how, then? Rade, how, how pupil, how student can hope to sing, to kata, to perform kata, and explain properly as his teacher only when he is properly listening. Without listening, he can have a hope, but it will never work. He has to connect his mind, all senses with his teacher. And then step by step, slowly, first become absorbed with his feelings and words. And then maybe, if teacher wants, he can start to sing loudly. Or, if the teacher doesn't want, he wants to make him another instrument, then can he sing inside of him, himself. It depends on teacher. What then to speak of the sweetness of the jingling of Sri Radhika's ankle bells? Shila Prabhupada Saraswati writes, When can I see Sri Radha with her charming form, shyly looking down at her own toes when she sees the moonlike face of Krishna? the king of relishes from afar, as she steps along with jingling ankle bells? The endless streams of Mahabhava that gush from Radhika's limbs when she experiences the ecstasy of seeing Krishna sprinkle her ankle bells and make their jingling sound like an ocean of neck. So what gives this sweet sound to Radhika's ankle bells. Why they are jingling so sweet? Because they are in touch with the embodiment of Mahabhav. Radhika's Mahabhav, Radhika's pure love gives the sweetness of these ankle bells. And when Krishna is running after Radhika to listen this jingling of her ankle bells, 
He actually wants to relish her deep love for him. Because the love is most audible, most intense sound, which can be heard, which can be touched, which can be looked, tasted with all senses. There is no louder sound than Mahabha. And because of that sound, all these sounds are coming in all spiritual worlds, penetrate through different layers and coming in the material world. But the original sound is the sound of Radharani's Mahabhav heart. <laughs> Sri Raghunath Das says, Please let me relish just one drop of the sweet nectar of this jingling. Raghunata's heart is filled with this strong desire and this desire always increases causing him to lament like this. Words cannot really describe these lamentations. Through these prayers, the absorption of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami can be experienced. Once again, through these prayers, maybe we can read like this. Through these prayers, we can experience absorption of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Not everyone can be addressed so lovingly with Kalyani. All auspicious Swamini. The sweetness of this address does not indicate the heart's perception of anything from this material world. These transcendental pastimes bloom up within the heart in such a way that nothing from the visible world can be per perceived within the heart anymore. Material consciousness maddens the heart of the aspirant. This experience cannot be had through mere dry knowledge, but only through pure love, characterized by an intense feeling of mindness. <laughs> this experience
and be had only through pure love, characterized by an intense feeling of mindness. The great say, I am yours, and you are my beloved, rather, mine. This is, means minus. Mamata. I am completely yours. I don't have anyone else but you. But you are also mine. When we say to someone you are mine, it means that I want to possess you, my dear. I want to protect you. I want that you depend on, on me. If we just say I am yours, it means do with me whatever you want. And it is okay. But the more intense feeling is when I say, when devotee is saying, but you are mine. So it means, I know also what is good for you. Like Yashoda. He said, you are mine, Gopal. I know which kind of food is good for you. Don't eat this earth. I know how proper behavior is. I know how to protect you. I know how to feed you. So this prema, it's not ordinary prema. But this kind of prema, you are mine. Bring devotee in the position of closeness, Vishramba, closeness with Ishtadev, much more than only I am yours. <laughs> Devotees in Vaikuntha, they have prominent this mood of, I am yours, my Lord Naraya. But devotees in Vraja, they always say, you are mine. Friends are saying, you are my friend. Lovers are saying, you are my lover. And also Manjuris. Brother Rani's maid servants say, yes, I am yours, I am yours. But in the same time, when Raghunath is speaking these kind of words, he is speaking so strongly because he has close relation, intimate relationship with Radharani that you are mine. Radhe. The great sage Shukadev was astonished by the feelings of mindness felt towards Krishna by his loving devotees in Vraj. Mm. And he told Maharaj Parikshit. Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Kent. The Lord, who is called Adhokshaja, he who is not perceivable through the material senses, has no inside, no outside, no before, no after. He is pervading the world from west to east, inside and outside, 
and his form is the world itself. But now he allowed himself to be bound to a grinding mortar by his gopi mother. Just like an ordinary mortal human child. Here, the all-pervading Lord loses his omnipotence at the hands of his loving devotee. So this is Rajamud. Krishna wants to be possessed by his devotee. In material world, no one wants to be possessed with someone. I don't want that you possess me. Isn't it? But in the realm, in the world of pure love, Krishna wants to be possessed and he is enjoying to be possessed by her loving, his loving devotees. Same goes with Radharani. He is she is relishing to be possessed by her sakis and especially intimate manjaris. Because when you are possessed, In other words, when you are controlled under the love, then you can really relish what love means. If, we, if the person is always rejecting to be possessed by someone who is loving him, he cannot relish the real, true love. And this is the great difference between material world and spiritual, transcendental world that pure prema, pure love is present. To be possessed, to be controlled from others in material world brings so many difficulties. Traumas, <laughs> psychological traumas, and so on. But to be possessed, in spiritual world, I belong to you, and you belong to me. This is Bhaktira's science. This is real science. Of Bhakti, Ras. And we need the time to really digest it, to accept it, and really understand it. What is impossible in the world of Tatva? Spiritual truth becomes possible in the world of Leela. Although Krishna is the Supreme Lord, who cannot be perceived even by great mystics, he still allows his cowherd boyfriend, Shridam, to mount his shoulders after he lost the game. Srimad Bhagavat, it's written in Srimad Bhagavat, 
Ten Kent. The Supreme Lord, whose lotus feet cannot be even perceived by the greatest mystics, now holds his lotus feet on the chests of his cowherd boyfriends. There is no comparison to the amorous relationship of a devotee to the amorous relationship a devotee can have with the Lord. Nothing can be compared to the amorous relationship a devotee can have with the Lord. His beloved is sitting in a kunja, being angry with him. And the Lord stands at the Kunja gate with tear-filled eyes like a beggar, like an offender. So Krishna really feels now it's time to beg because I made offense. <laughs> It's not, Krishna is not like acting. <laughs> Manamai, proud Radhika, then angrily rebukes him, saying, Go, Madhava, go, Keshava, don't speak your false words to me, just follow that girl who removes your sorrow o lotus eyed one <laughs> this is the combination winning combination she chases him away and then calls him in the same sentence o lotus eyed one <laughs> my god <laughs> prema really becomes manifest when there develops a feeling of he or she is mine. We find uh, Lord Brahma's prayer to Krishna in Bhagavat. Lord Brahma said, everyone may say that he knows you in full. Let them know it. What more can I say, O oh Lord? I cannot perceive your greatness with my mind, with my body, or words. But in Vraj, a tailor will come up to Krishna with a yardstick to see what his size is. <laughs> that is the wonderful power of the love of Vraj. <laughs> Raja Loka Anusarata. From the tailor in Vraja, we should learn Raja Bhakti. Not from the Gyanis, from the Rikshavalis. Because they are always immersed in natural love, without any fear, hesitation, any Aishwarya mood. Come, come. I want to measure you. How you grow up now. But Brahma had the great problem with that. Because he was worshipping Krishna. 
like a supreme personality, all pervading, all controller, all knowing. And because of that, he made a parat, great a parat. And when he understood what he made, actually, when he stole the cows and cowboys, then he started to offer the prayer. And he now is honestly, truly, from bottom of his heart, is saying, I cannot perceive your greatness with my body, mind, and words. To really understand your greatness means to really relish your sweetness. But I am so identified with my body, mind, and words like a brown. And I'm sorry for this offense. So this Lila is showing that for many, is very difficult to understand that Krishna is playing with his friends, that Krishna is just a foolish, naughty boy of his mother, that he is the lover of Radharani. So Brahma, this is Brahma Aparat. And when he was trying to apologize to Krishna for his offenses. He didn't do it alone. He took Surabi cow with him because I know some Rajavasi has to support me, to be close to me. And Surabi is always so merciful. And then with Surabi, he approached to Krishna, give this long, 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 long prayers, excuses. And I remember, I never forget that. This is the reason why I remember when Vishwana Chakrati Thakur in the end is saying, and all the time when Brahma was talking his prayer of excuse, and when he finished, Krishna was looking at him like a small five-year-old boy, thinking, what this guy is talking about? And Vishwara Chakra, it helped me so much to enter in Vraj Lila, is giving beautiful commentary and say, why Krishna? acted like this because he is living in Vraja. He didn't want to take another form, but just to stay Mugda, innocent child, boy who is looking with his four-headed Brahma, saying, what this guy is talking about? And looking at him with terrified eyes. <laughs> So this is the Raja mood. And to enter deeply in Raja mood, we should learn from tailors, from sweepers, from rickshaw valleys, be because they don't have these kind of obstacles <laughs> to chastise Krishna, to call him different names. And they don't have hesitation and fear to glorify Radharani with jingling of their sweet words. That is. Radhe, so the other day, Kishori and I went <clears throat> to our uh, Murtiwala friend. Uh, near Banke Bihari, he has a shop. We go uh, for our deities, we bought our deities there, and uh, uh, we buy everything for our deities and our friends. Many of our friends go there. He's a very nice, jolly guy, 
And um, uh, last time we went there and we said, we, we were talking about, uh, yeah, he has Gopal. And then we mentioned, yeah, we are all into Rade Rade. And then he opened his eyes like Radha and Krishna are complete, he said, are completely two different levels. Krishna is down. <laughs> and Radha is all inconvincible, inconceivable power. It's, it's like sky and earth. And therefore, Krishna, in front of Radha, Krishna is always like this. Radha, give me mercy. Because it's another level of existence. Brija Basi. Raja Lokanu Sarata. No scriptures can teach us this. Through living example. Only living Rajavasi. And we need the Kripa from Rajavasis. <laughs> he said, Radha is a superpower. <laughs> this is Madhurya also. This is complete like... <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Ah, the address Kalyani is illuminated by the sweet luster of Radha and Krishna's mutual relish of each other one more time please mm -hmm. the kaji the address so uh -huh. the address kalyani is illuminated by the sweet luster of radha and krishna's mutual relish of each other Kalanidi and Kalavati. Kalanidi Krishna, who is the ocean, is the ocean of qualities. And Kalavati, who is the ocean of all artfulness, they bring each other so much auspiciousness when they are together. And knowing that, Tulasi is addressing when your mutual love is so between your between each other is so intense, you Rade are becoming Kalyani. You are always in every moment auspicious for your lover. And in this Kalyan is a Kala all the time, but also this is the Kambij mantra. She is most auspicious when she is embracing her, when she allows him to embrace her. And when she is Kalavati, expert in all loving arts, to give satisfaction to this Kala Nidi, who is always eager, like an ocean, to satisfy all the waves of his desires. So we can see here how Acharyas 
are giving us in a very subtle, hidden way possibility that we can enter deeply, deeply, deeply in these loving, amorous pastimes. And how this Klim Bij Mantra of Kama Gayatri Mantra, which we received from Gurudev, is with full potency to establish Manjari Bhava in the heart of devotee and also help him in his bhajana, Lilasmara, on Klim, when they are always together. Would someone else like to share some? Please, most welcome. Just feel free. I could ask something. Ah, yeah. Here we have. Sandana. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Radhe Radhe, very often it it is spoken about one drop this one one drop of this ocean of nectar and um, maybe you, you feel inspired to share something about it for me what came to my heart or mind it's um, something about the totality of um of feelings of um what is happening of connectedness so that one drop would change everything because it's essentially everything is or, or so much I have no idea of course about it <laughs> is inherent to this drop maybe somebody would like to share on this because it's often I read that it up. Mm. You want to say something? Guru there? Please, you first, please you first, then I will add some. Okay. <laughs> Guru there, you want to say? To share some? <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. No, my dear. So when we say, I want just to drop of your nectarian voice to hear, just the drop of your nectarian glance to receive, it automatically is showing how, first of all, devotee is deeply in intense love. He has so much eagerness to attain beloved that he is humbly with full humility, is praying, only drop of your voice, only one syllable of your word will be enough to fulfill my heart. When we are in love with someone and we are in mood of separation, we are Desiring, oh, when can I hear just uh, one word, even through mobile, <laughs> of my beloved? Hi, and that's finished. Rade, because this word will nourish all my day. This is the potency of love. So, in that way, Acharyas are praying and say, only drop of your mercy. Yes, because you, drop of your mercy is actually ocean of your mercy. It's not a drop like material drop. It's ocean of love. Ocean of happiness. Ocean of mercy. 
unlimited ocean. And when you receive from unlimited ocean one drop, it means that this drop is also unlimited. Because when you take something from unlimited, this small part and parcel is also unlimited. And eternal. So this is the humility of a lover who is eager to receive at least something from beloved. Just show me on your mobile one second. I want to see with my eyes your picture. Pop, bliss, finished. But this is the ocean for my eyes. I just want to touch you, even in my mind, if I touch you, I will be consoled, consoled, sorry. So this is the art of loving, but this is also, my dears, science of bhakti ras. <laughs> I like these words. And I'm so happy when Gurudev take it out from Prabhupada, because Every so much time devotees are thinking when these words science appears, it's so materialistic, it's so tattvic, philosophical. No, this is real relishing, art of relishing. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is my foolishness here. <laughs> Say something, and Bekaji, help your poor brother. Vandana said, thank you. <laughs> you know, Karanga, what, what this reminded me, there is one very nice commentary in uh, uh, Ananta Babas. He said, soul is qualified to receive a drop. So, <laughs> this is our qualification. So, seems like we are naturally happy small. <laughs> small and ecstatic, small and blissful. And for us, what you said, drop, is like, wow. <laughs> It like we can drown in drop of their mercy. <laughs> we, can lose, we can lose ourselves in drop of their mercy. Yeah. Yeah. It comes also from our natural humility that comes from our experience. We all already, we who are here, I'm sure, Vandana also, who asked the question, has experience of these small dosages of sweet mercy. And we would like to, this mercy, to repeat and repeat and repeat. Why? Because we know the value in our life. We know how much change, peace, understanding, compassion, feeling for others, serving others, that made our life so much better in quality, came from this small doses every day <laughs> we are taking the medicine taking the medicine taking the medicine and in it improves our lives inside and outside and we also don't want to push ishtadev into anything why because out of experience, we trust Ishtadev. We don't want to push. We don't want to push Ishtadev. We trust. Radha, you know better than me 
what is the dosage <laughs> and when you will be when you will give me so i'm just he i'm just making a statement i'm ready whenever you decide by your own sweet will to give me the drop i'm excitingly enthusiastically awaiting because i know how much it will change me how much quality it will bring into my life modesty skromnost modesty skromnost modesty is amazing quality that comes from this anuraga experience of exchange between us and our ishta devrada yeah shirad <laughs> Should we stop? Andakaji? What's the time now? Quarter past yeah. six. Ah, six fifteen. Yes, maybe it's quite enough. Enough. It's not okay. ne- yeah, it's not necessary to yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. slowly, okay. easy, yeah, patiently, you know. Yeah. Sure Without out. rush. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Gorangaji. <laughs> sure radhe, radhe. Andaka, <laughs> thank you very much for your reading. Sure Gurudev. We love you. Even when you are silent. <laughs>